Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Fort Bislin, located in St. Mary Parish, Louisiana, on the 12th and 13th of April, 1863. Union Major General Nathaniel P. Banks had been scouting Port Hudson as part of U.S. Major General Ulysses S. Grant plan for the Vicksburg push. Banks' report indicated that Port Hudson was too strong to attack, and instead he would shift his assault on the Confederate forces to Alexandria. There, he would go after Confederate Major General Richard Taylor's defensive forces. This would allow him to cut off Port Hudson's supplies off the Red River, and that would then allow Banks to take Port Hudson after their supply started running out. Banks moved forward with a force of 16,000 men of the 19th Corps from Bayou Tech. Two of his divisions crossed Berwick Bay from Morgan City, the west side of Berwick. The third division was sent under command of Brigadier General Cuvier Grover, who utilized steamships from Grand Lake to cut off Taylor's retreat. On the 12th of April, Taylor spotted the oncoming Union forces as they approached Fort Bislin. He ordered his artillery from the fort and Diana, a Union gunboat they had captured, to attack the approaching Union forces. After some time, the Union artillery returned fire, and put the Diana out of commission for a few days. The Union infantry crossed the land, waited for General Grover's 3rd Division to land, and at 11 a.m. Grover's troops joined with Banks' land-based infantry, and they began to attack the fort for the remainder of the day and up until sunset. Confederate Commander Richard Taylor found out that evening that the Union forces were at least three divisions and decided that discretion was the better part of valor. He had his forces flee under the cover of night, leaving the only fortification in the way of Grant's army empty much like the future of the Confederacy. Estimated losses were 224 Union casualties, including dead, wounded, and missing, while the Confederates suffered 450 soldiers killed, wounded, captured, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.